Hello guys, welcome to the Tech Point Africa podcast. My name is Bolu and I'm your host for today. Today we're talking about NFTs and what really happened to them. But before we get into that conversation, quick updates on some of the tech happenings across Africa. So MCN wants to increase data and voice prices. It wants to do this because it lost around $101 million to Forex last year. So it's talking to regulators in countries where it operates to increase voice and data tariffs. If you've been following the podcast for some time, you will notice when we talked about MTN's forex loss in Nigeria, which caused it a huge, huge loss and wiped out dividends of shareholders. MTN is not the only one increasing prices. Netflix has announced a new pricing structure for Nigerian customers. By April 1, the standard plan, which is currently 3,600 naira, that's around $2.00 will now become 4,000 Naira, which is almost $3. The mobile and premium plans will also see a slight increase, but the basic plan will stay the same. And that's not all Netflix is doing. It might also be testing ad-supported plans in Nigeria. So it announced ad-supported plans a couple of years ago, but that's only available to UK, US and users in Canada. But it might be testing that out in Nigeria really soon. And finally, some good news from the Commercial Bank of Ethiopia. The bank has been able to recover $10 million out of the $40 million that it lost to a system glitch. But the bank is saying the amount lost was not actually $40 million, that it was way, way less than that. And some reports are also saying that the $10 million it has been able to recover is around 80% of the total amount it lost. So that's that on some of the happenings across the African tech ecosystem. You can get more stories on the TechPoint Africa website. There are loads so loads of stories there and now let's get into the conversation of the day today we'll be discussing something very interesting i'm sure you've all heard of nfts i think back in 2021 they were like really popular we had stories of artists making so much money from NFTs. I actually talked to Anthony Azekwa about how he made so much money from NFTs, investors making millions of dollars from NFTs. And I'm sure you're probably thinking, oh, those things are dead, right? Well, maybe they are, maybe they are not. We'll find out from one of the foremost NFT investors in Nigeria, even Africa, right? His name is Michael Ogu. And he'll be telling us if NFTs are truly dead or we have it twisted. Hello, Michael. How you doing, bro? It's been a minute, man. Yeah, it's been a very long minute. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys don't care about us when the market's down. I know, right? And that, that no, worry. that that's changed. That's changed. Okay, we'll, we'll make that change. All yeah. right. So let me just introduce yourself a bit yeah. more to our audience so them know you. So from the crypto perspective, I first got into crypto probably at the heights of the 2017 market. I was in Bitcoin, of course. I had no clue what was going on in the market. I just been hearing about this thing called Bitcoin and I actually had a transaction that I had to do and someone told me to send them Bitcoin and I was forced to figure out this thing and figured it out. And then I just bought some and just held it and I was like, yeah, cool, whatever. And yeah, I think that was it. That was my first introduction. I heard him, uh, Chamath Palhaptia talking about, he called it sucker's insurance then. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, th this guy's, he's been around the block. He must know what he's talking about. So let me just go and dig. And I dug and dug and dug and got into the space as you go down the rabbit hole get into bitcoin get into ethereum so i got into ethereum and i understood it as programmable smart contracts and it was bitcoin was cool but ethereum was a bit more fun and then yeah i got into nfts from there to be honest nice. and this is it wasn't really my day job day job at the time it was like definitely on the side but, but yeah delved deep and delved hard and <laughs> it, it's been it's been crazy I would say that we agree with everybody that NFTs are dead you know, <laughs> in a very sarcastic way. Okay. So, yeah, we don't think they are, All right. but that's how I got into it. Yeah. Yeah, Michael, you're also the um, CEO of Free Me Digital. I think you do a lot of stuff with music as well, right? Been in the music space for a long period of time, yes. Makes sense. All right. Let's, now, let's move back to NFTs now. I know you were like one of the like foremost um, people that bought into some of the most, I think some of the most profitable NFTs at the time, the Crypto Punks and the Body Yard Club. How transformational was that for you? If you could also maybe give us an idea of how big that investment was in, in terms of it. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't big. Okay. You know, I mean, look at the end of the day. Yeah, they're valuable now. And I wouldn't say profitable collections. I'd mm. say iconic collections. Mm. So the Crypto Punks collection is probably the most 
iconic identity profile project on the Ethereum blockchain. It will go down in history as that iconic project that kind of started off everything. There were a few projects before it, but it was, it's was it been the most iconic one till today. And I think okay. that thesis runs for the foreseeable future. When I bought my first CryptoPunk, I'd, I'd already been doing well enough in Bitcoin, Ethereum, oh, okay. buying and stacking. And there was still quite cheap well, at that stage. I think I paid about, about, it was less than 10 ETH at the time for my punk. Okay. And I believe at that time, Ethereum was probably trading at about, I don't know, $800, $1,000, nothing too crazy. Today's, today, Ethereum is like $4,000 yeah. of a coin. I paid, maybe, by standards of buying an internet picture, it was expensive. <laughs> yes. But standards of what was going on in the space, it wasn't. So I was mm. probably spending about $10,000 wow. buying it. Oh, buying one. Buying one, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the cheapest one today now is still about $200,000. Wow. And, and that's, that's in the bear market. That's it coming down, which means... At the height, it was 150 ETH. At, at the height of the 2021 market, each crypto punk was about five hundred thousand dollars. Wow, that's I mean that's floor ones, oh. floor crypto punks. The rare ones were like the alien ones. I think the biggest sell at that point was maybe like four or five million dollars for an alien punk or mm. an ape punk. It, they got into the multiple millions of dollars. We recently had a really big alien punk sell. It was about fifteen million US dollars. This was last month. Wow. So yeah, that's the range. Cheapest two hundred thousand. Most expensive, 15 million. There's only 10,000 of these punks. Damn. So, yeah, there's a range based on rarity. That's really interesting. I always wish I got into crypto enough to, like, to have experimented with some of those things. Or maybe just, I, I remember back when I was, I think I just finished school then. And then I learned about Ethereum. And I think, what year was that? I think maybe 2019 or 2020. Yeah. I think Ethereum was one for, I remember it in Naira. I think it was 50,000 Naira yeah. or 60. Yeah. And Probably, yeah. I just remember, I think I was still collecting my NYC at a weekend. And I was like, <laughs> what if I just take in, because it was the COVID year, right? So I didn't really need to spend that money. So I was like, what if I just take in four months worth of my Alawi and I just That's bought true. Ethereum, right? <laughs> I bought like three, four, five, or even 10, right? But yeah, let's, 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 oh, you didn't <laughs> let's not do it. I bought I think I bought ten thousand era watts. Okay, better than nothing, man. Now. Oh, dope, good. That's that's good. That's what <laughs> yeah, it's all I still, about. I still have it too now. Holding it. Yeah, I'm glad I still I did that. And I wish I did more, but yeah, we all have wishes, man. Yeah. We all have wishes. Yeah. <laughs> all right, NFTs, the body API clubs, and the crypto yeah. punks you spoke yeah, about, they did really well. Yeah. yeah, but I think around 2021, it blew up more, and then we had more artists that were doing their own thing. Yep doing their works and selling it as NFTs. How transformational would you think NFTs were to like the art space, the creative space in general, majorly for people in Africa? It was massive. On a global level, it was massive. On a local level, it was massive. I'm pretty sure I'm the biggest collector of Nigerian NFT artwork as it stands. And, and for me, the two biggest artists to come out of this space are Osinachi and um, uh, Antine Zekiwo. Mm. There are other artists that I do uh, have collected as well, okay. and I still do collect. But, you know, it was transformational. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking about going from a, a spot where your art is limited to physical boundaries. Um, if you find an international buyer, you need to... It's, first, it's going to be hard to find an international buyer on the traditional art market. And then if you do, it's, okay, how do you arrange payment? How do you arrange shipping? There's just so much friction, right? And I think when... NFTs were unlocked, especially from an art perspective. Artists who got in early did well. You know, mm. Osinachi did well. He was the he's the first African artist, probably the first black artist to actually have an auction with Christie's. Christie's is a very famous auction house in the UK. And I, I was lucky enough to bid and get a piece. There was only five pieces available. I had to go through a broker in the UK and I got one of the uh, Osinachi Christie's pieces. This was 2021 or so. Yeah, and I supported Anthony Ezekiel. I've got a pretty big studio space in Lecky and He's, he's done a few exhibitions at my spot. I've been around the country with him as well because I've obviously seen how much opportunity has been unlocked mm -hmm. for these younger talents. I've always just tried to do my part to help. It's not just all degenerate gambling. It's just all, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's also about how we also uplifting the space. True. So yeah, it's been transformational. All right. Now let, let's now go to the big question, right? Mm -hmm. um, we've, talked, we've talked a lot about how transformational they are, talked a lot about how much money people made, things like that. So what happened? We just didn't hear of NFTs again. Everywhere just went quiet. And I, I remember talking to some people that I, I even consider big on crypto, things like that. Yeah. And we were having a conversation and they were like, wow, I'm so surprised that something that huge could just phase out out of thin air. What really happened? Whoever you spoke to and didn't really, they don't understand our mm. space. You need to look at 
the entire crypto industry from a macro perspective, right? Everything is based on four-year cycles primarily. We know this pretty well. Bitcoin has been around for to 2009, it's better part of like maybe 15 years or so, right? And it, it's guided by these cycles also, there's macro as well, like what's happening with the business cycle? What is, is the federal government pr printing? Are they tightening? What's liquidity like? But largely speaking, Bitcoin as itself as a network, it goes to what we call the halving every four years. Yeah. And the halving is actually coming up in April. And what had actually happened at the time, so we knew that at the point of the halving, we knew that the network was going to get tight. And once the network gets tight, it gets harder to like to mine Bitcoin. And that just squeezes supply. And then when there's demand, prices are going to go up, right? And because mm. it's a scarce asset, that's what drives the bull market primarily. Bitcoin is always roughly about 45, 50% of the entire crypto market capitalization. Yeah. NFTs are just literally a beta play on, on something like Bitcoin or Ethereum. Let's just say Ethereum, because then NFTs are just on Ethereum. So it wasn't surprising to me that the market came to that kind of like grinding halt. It was always going to happen. I think that because it was my, f I, at the first cycle I had, I was still learning. The second cycle, I didn't time my exits well enough. This is my third cycle for all intents and purposes now. But, but yes, and like a lot of people managed to exit the markets on time because they understood this is the cyclical nature of these markets. And they moved to other assets like stable coins, fiat stable coins, or just BTC, which weathers these bear markets the best. Right? Mm. So anyone who says that they didn't understand how it was going to, how it crashed, then you, don't, you didn't really understand. It was always going to happen. It's the same way that it's going to happen this cycle as well. We just entered a bull. We entered a bull stage maybe about six, seven months. Seven, six, seven months ago. Okay. We're going into the, we're not at the euphoria stage because Bitcoin goes through its halving next month in, in April. And then we probably have about, I don't know, 9, 10, 12 to 24 months of up only activity <laughs> to that parabolic, I love that. Forest, <laughs> crazy level. And then like every kind of, like every cycle, it will crash. Maybe the volatility in this cycle will be eased because we've had the Bitcoin ETFs for the first time. NFTs are literally just following the Bitcoin, crypto, the wider cycle. Okay. Do you understand? And now okay. we have NFTs on Bitcoin, NFTs on Ethereum, NFTs on Solana, mm -hmm. NFTs across multiple chains. We're going to see more of how that's going to play out okay. at the end of this cycle. All right. So basically you're saying what happened was they just followed the same trajectory as the way the crypto market goes exactly. up and down. Exactly. All right. And so, liquidity mm -hmm. would actually be sucked out of NFTs first mm -hmm. because they're illiquid assets. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. All the way you can sell your... If you have Ethereum, you can literally sell it all the way down on big markets like Binance, Bybit, Coinbase. You can keep selling because there's always a willing buyer mm. at some point. But with NFTs, it's like trying to sell a car. Mm. If no one is coming to see the car or if everyone's seen the car and saying, I don't like the car, you can't sell it. There's no liquid markets for NFTs. Yeah. So it was much harder for that market took a, took a it's taken a beating. Let me not lie. It's okay. taken a bad <laughs> beating. Yeah. Okay. The funny thing is, while people say it's dead and while the noise isn't as much, even after all that time, I remember I know a particular guy that was talking to me about getting into, I think they call them alphas or something. Alpha chats. Yes. And yeah. I could actually, that people are still making money from yeah. NFTs. For sure. How, how does that how, is, how does that market really happen? I think it's on, it was on the Solana blockchain. Okay. It, it didn't really say more about Ethereum. What's really going on within that market? It's like a closed market where people just make money from i don't really get it to be honest the fact of the matter is nfts are our nft specifically mm. it's culture right? mm. it's just culture on the blockchain so when you look at things like crypto punks board apes autoglyphs fidenzas ringers x copy art hackatow art the whole kind of like broad range of like crypto art right it, it's just culture on the blockchain so when you start talking about alpha Alpha is more like probably the, the tradable projects, the kind of like the pump and dump projects. Mm. Because any if you buy traditional art, you're not buying traditional art to sell it the next day. True. There's no alpha chat True. to go and buy a, an expensive piece of artwork. What's happened is wealthy people used art as almost like an inflation hedge historically. Mm. Mm. Because if you go and buy a Picasso, you're pretty sure that it's the only Picasso. So it should only literally accrue value, right? Because mm. we, we all agree that Picasso, Michelangelo... Banksy, all these artists have some kind of value. Mm. So over time, it's not going to really go down in value, right? So when you start talking about art NFTs, yeah, you don't need to go into this kind of like alpha chats. You just need to understand the space. When you start talking about alpha chats, yeah, there are <laughs> projects that if I bought it at one ETH, I need to sell it at 
at 5e yeah I, but i take a different perspective on on the space yeah a lot of people need to understand that too and I, but i think it will be hard for people to understand that because of the close ties nfts have with the crypto market i mean you can't really separate them right? you can't no. but then i Possible. think there needs to come a time where nfts become the next thing from what you said something about how rich people buy art and mm -hmm. then they but then I think there needs to come that time where NFTs just become that way to buy that kind of art, but do it in a more digital manner. Do you think that that NFTs will become like their own thing, separate from crypto? Where crypto is just something that help people do it. Do you know what? I think mm. the NFTs, so art NFTs are literally just been like a Trojan horse mm. to get this NFT technology into the space and then potentially out to the masses. Mm. NFTs are much bigger than just art, mm. right? It, it, an NFT is, is a non-fungible token. So Bitcoin is a fungible token, right? A non-fungible token is a unique kind of like item. So okay. I believe that at some point, our driver's license will be NFTs. Okay. When we book a plane, the ticket will come as an NFT. When you book a hotel, your hotel reservation will be an NFT. When you go to watch a basketball game or a football game, when you get your university certificate, that will be an NFT and it will be all registered on the blockchain. So art has just been the way that media... And the masses who have been interested early on have got to understand it. So they think that NFTs are just art. Okay. But it's bigger than just art. Mm. There's art within it. It's just taking any kind of like tangible asset and saying, okay, let's register on the blockchain. And like I say, you get mass adoption. It's, it's, it's a wide space. NFTs aren't going anywhere. Mm. If there's anything that I know that NFTs are not going anywhere at all. Yeah. So I think what, what really happened from what you said, I, I think what happened with NFTs is there's this thing in technology where once there's a new type of tech, mm -hmm. there's a lot of noise sure. at first. Sure. And then there's this arc. They, they describe it as an arc. And then there's a lot of noise. People talk about it a lot. And then it comes down. Yep. And then at that point where it comes down is where real people now start working on innovation it. Innovation happens. That is where the real innovation happens. Yep. It's not during when... <laughs> the the noise, cycle, yeah. no. No. The real no. innovation happens and then it now starts developing properly. Yeah. Like real use cases. Yes, like yeah. real use cases come yeah. out of it. So hopefully that happens to NFTs too. It hopefully. will. Look, look, it depends what your use case for, for your NFTs are. The problem with the last cycle is so many people's use case for NFTs was I want to buy high, buy low and sell high. That was the use case. Yeah. The piece that I bought from from the Osinachi Christie's auction, it's sitting comfortably in my wallet and it's not going anywhere. I didn't buy it based on, oh, I need to buy low and sell high. I bought it based on this is the first African artist to auction an NFT with Christie's. Mm. In 50 years time, no one's going to tell me there's no value to that. It's going to have True. value. True. Right. And do I hold the cash that I'm holding? So I exchanged it for cash, right? The cash that I'm holding in 50 years, will it be worth less or worth more? It will be mm. worth less. Inflation will erode that fiat cash I'm holding. But then that unique NFT that I've bought and re it's been registered on the blockchain, it's going to have a value, right? And I believe that there'll be a version of me in 40 years time who would say, yes, actually, I agree. This thing did have value and some kind of provenance. And this is what I'm going to be willing to pay for it. So there'll be a a perspective of value appreciation over time. Okay. So, yeah. All right. My next question will now be, now we've established that, okay, maybe the noise and the hype might be dead, but NFT itself as a technology is very much alive. Alive. So should artists, not just the people who create arts, right, music, everyone that creates some type of creative content, should they still bet big on NFTs? Should they still consider turning some of their works into NFTs and selling them as NFTs? 100%. Because of my work in the music industry, you get to music, like artists have always been really good to adopt technology early, whether it's streaming or this or that or the third. We adopt, you know, the music industry has always adopted technology quite, quite early, right? So I just see NFTs as a tool in a toolbox. Mm. It's not going to destroy streaming services. It's not going to be like, oh, we're gonna, I'm going to consume all my music as NFTs. No, yeah. that was what, where some people got it wrong. Spotify and Apple Music, even though they don't pay amazing, there's, it's still amazing technology, yeah. right? You can't take that away. The subscription you know, market is it's still a market that's been able to onboard a lot of people. Locally, the price point of Spotify, as long as it's fair, fair people will come on. So NFTs for me is just a tool in the toolbox when you're now talking about, when you're talking about artists. Yes, I do advise artists, creatives to go out and learn the technology, understand how they can use it, understand how they can get into the space. If the artists that I work with, I'm always trying to advise and guide them. This is where we are in this space. This is what you need to consider. Because I believe at some point it will just become almost like it will just become natural. 
Okay. So I think there's definitely opportunities. Even the artists as well. You've got to remember that the few art, art galleries we have in Lagos, Nikkei Art Gallery, Rele Art Gallery, and all the other ones, they're few and far between. They're not, they're not massive. They're not a massive amount of art galleries in Lagos. But if you actually inscribe your work on the blockchain, put it up available for sale on like Super Rare or Foundation or Zora or any of these kind of like NFT marketplaces, you then have a global audience, right? Yeah. So it's the same way that you've had music artists who have been opened up to a global market thanks to streaming based on cds the market was local yes if a guy in atlanta wants to hear david o's album as a cd he's it's going to be impossible <laughs> yeah but he can jump onto his spotify and listen to it so when it comes to visual artists it, it's an opportunity for them as well to get access to to a global market but i, I have a question for you even before okay. you go on look All do right. you think that we are becoming more or less digital people more we're becoming more more digital people. more digital yeah, right more digital. we're spending more time online sure. We're actually ass assigning more value to digital objects. True. I'm sure you guys' Facebook page and IG page and TikTok page is valuable to you as an individual and val yeah. valuable to the company. Yes. If you lose it today, you can be like, <laughs> you know, what's up? But it, it's digital. You mm. can't see or touch mm. or feel the page, can you? True. Now, I think one of the things people don't understand, like why I'm a, my big belief in the space is at the core of this space is decentralization. I mean, all the gambling and all the money making <laughs> has become part of it because yeah. it's early, right? Yeah. But decentralization is the core thesis behind it. And mm. you don't own your Facebook page. You don't own your Instagram page. Mm. If Mark Zuckerberg says he doesn't like your denim, <laughs> your page is done, bro. It's done, right? Yeah. But is that fair? No. It's not fair. No, it's not. So you need to be able to say, and it's the same with money. If When we had those, that when we've had issues in Nigeria, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about NSARS, the banks sure. didn't give access to people's bank accounts, right? They try to now say, oh, how can we raise crypto in order to they fulfill our campaign, it. right? Yeah. Now, it, it, I get some governments why they'd want to obviously protect the fiat, their fiat currencies mm. and protect government policy. But humanity, you should, be, you should be allowed a level of decentralization where you're allowed to make your own choices as a human being. Mm. NFTs, crypto, it's part of that decentralization goal, that decentralization opportunity. Can as we're getting more digital, just consider that. All right. Decentralization sounds... I don't know what... How, should I say I disagree? Because I think... Maybe in some facets mm -hmm. of business, decentralization can work. Yep. But I think what has kept the world running for a long time is capitalism. The zeal that people have to want to be the best they can be, to make as much money as they want to, has, re has led to the rise of a lot of great technologies mm -hmm. that we have today. So I think decentralization could actually kill that, could kill that spirit. No way. No way. Decentralization unlocks it. Mm. because then when you're talking about decentralized okay fine you're saying you're talking about killing technology mm. there could be projects that you're working on that the government of a country you're in doesn't like we don't want this technology because it's going to affect this plan that we have and they're going to now tell the bank stop doing business with this person mm. stop working with this person you get shut down and shut out of the system right with the press of a button decentralization means that that doesn't happen look Ma um, Elon Musk took over Twitter because he felt that that it was being too controlled it mm. was being censored and he feels like this Twitter buyout for him is almost like this battle for freedom, like for free speech. So I think the decentralization does the opposite. Okay. Centralization to me is where you now have the command and control. You can say this, you can do this. You're allowed to spend your money here. You're allowed to buy this there. That's what centralization does. Decentralization is on the complete flip. It, it flips the script completely and okay. allows for humans to flourish i think that based on these technology the technology of the blockchain because let's be honest whether we're talking bitcoin ethereum solana nfts it's all based on blockchain technology yeah blockchain technology will unlock a renaissance and i think in this age we're moving into where we have ai doing all sorts of crazy things blockchain technology also allows us to identify what's real and what's fake mm. right we're going to have a massive problem with what's real and what's fake, it's exploding now. We just don't know anymore, True. right? So at the end of the day, we had there was a photo the other day of the princess, uh, a princess is Kate Middleton, right? Yeah, yeah. And the photo had been, they say it had been photoshopped, photoshopped yeah. and there was all this backers and forwards, whether it was real. And the first thing that came to my mind was if that photo had obviously been inscribed, put on the blockchain, minted as an NFT or whatever from an original source, if there's any question, you go to that one source. 
check. Kate Middleton <laughs> came out eventually and said that, yes, she edited it. I believe that's what she said. Okay. She admitted she edited it. But if she hadn't, everyone would be like, how did we all get hold of this edited picture? Where did it come from? What was the source? Mm. But if you allow, if the, the blockchain allows us to keep that record and the decentralized blockchain, not all these centralized controlled change that will now tell us what they yeah. what they want to tell us yeah. so yes yeah, so i guess you have your view i have my view true, you true. know i think time time will tell time will tell <laughs> fact i agree yeah, with that one time, time, time. i could be completely wrong <laughs> yeah you know, so time will tell exactly. i i'm a big believer in learning and catching on to what you think could be the trend true. and just researching it for yourself all right yeah speaking about music right yeah you said yep. a lot about music i just remember that you were actually at the you were at the grammys Yes, I um, was. Yeah. Good year, good year. <laughs> yeah. Bad result, but a good year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did you see? Did you notice anything about where music could be going to in a few years as concerning what you said, decentralization and NFTs? And did you see, is there any signal or any sign to what the evolution of music would be like in a few years? I mean, from the Grammys perspective, no, because the Grammys is it's this big industry, mm -hmm. traditional industry, award ceremony, a couple of days in LA with a lot of the Afrobeats artists out there. And there wasn't really talk about oh, okay. crypto and stuff. But my perspective generally from that trend is that the move to independence mm -hmm. by a lot of artists, because 50 years ago, you, you couldn't release music without a record label. Mm -hmm. It was impossible. Just to record music was super expensive. Now people are recording music in their bedrooms and everywhere, releasing it via distributors like my distribution company and getting it live for the world. I definitely think that as we move towards independence, artists are going to need more tools in order to figure out who their super fans are. And I think that NFTs do a perfect job there. So even if you go on TikTok or Spotify, there's no way to really identify your core true fans. If your song is trending right now, it's trending right now. But there's some people who, whether you release a good song, a bad song, a mid song, they're your fans, they're your fans. True. And I think there's a, that concept called 1,000 true fans. We saw artists like Nipsey Hussle. If Nipsey Hussle was still alive, rest in peace, he'd be championing stuff like NFTs. I guarantee it. Because with your 1,000 true fans, and this is what I've told artists before, let's just imagine you're Wiz Kid and you're starting out, right? And then you drop an NFT and then your community buys into the NFT or you just airdrop it to your community. And it doesn't do much like other than register as your community member. Maybe it gives you access to a WhatsApp group or a Discord group or a Telegram group or gives you access to some kind of like behind the scenes stuff. And all that stuff is neither here or there. As a super fan, you're going to be happy just to be that core. But five years down the line, you can actually go back and check who are my super fans, who still mm. had the NFTs, mm. which wallet did I drop my NFT in? 10 years ago, mm. then you say, okay, who owns this wallet? Do you understand? You can be like, okay, fine. You've been my fan for 10 years. This NFT that I dropped 10 years ago before I was blown or whatever, I'm going to airdrop, whether it's cash, whether it's tickets to a show, whether it's some kind of like private event to a dinner with me. You can then say, okay, you were my day one. David O, WizKid, Burner Boy, there's no way for them to tell who are their day ones mm. right now. Mm. In 20 years time, as this technology improves and we see artists utilize, utilizing as a tool, almost like a membership club tool in some aspects, you will know who your day ones are. And then you can go back and reward your day ones. You followed me when I was nothing. Mm. You bought my album when I was zero and you still believe. Because we, I know this game. You get to a super, that superstar level. There's so many people around you who claim they were there when they weren't there. They just saw the, the, your heat, saw how hot you were and they tried to get as close as possible. But there's those who, who there's WizKid, they're real WizKid FC, real yeah. Davido, they're real 30 BG guys who are there <laughs> from the beginning, real outsiders. Yeah. Do you understand? And I think for me, that's one of the best use cases mm. for NFT technology when it comes to the music space. Mm. But I think NFTs have multiple applications. Okay. okay. All right. So if, you watch, if you've uh, been watching this podcast for this long, I think by now you now know NFTs are not dead. It's just the way we think about them. Uh, it's your perspective towards it. Uh, there was a rave. There was a lot of noise about it. Now there isn't so much noise, but it doesn't mean the tech itself has died. And by now I'm sure you've seen a different way to look at the technology. The noise just, will come back. The yeah. noise will come back. Look, I'll tell you one Which other is thing. My I'll tell you one other thing. Like NFTs do well when people get crypto rich. Exactly right? what, what so, I was about to ask. Okay. Now that the market is doing well, okay. are we going to see some more NFT noise? 100%. Because okay. people are just getting crypto rich again. Mm. You know, like I'm saying, like I know people who are making 
like six figures. There are people in groups that I've been in who are killing it on right now. There's a whole meme coin kind of like craze. Yeah. I will. I saw the truth is I saw the meta yeah. of memes like back in maybe November, December. Last cycle, I just faded memes. I wasn't mm. interested in Doge and Shiba and all of those ones. Mm. But I got it. It's culture. It's still mm. culture on the blockchain. Mm. I was lucky enough to get into some really amazing projects like Whiff. Whiff now just has about a three billion dollar market cap. I think I bought it early and I got my I bought for my mom, I bought for my wife. They're like, they're happy with their games. They're like, <laughs> yo, is this what you've been doing on this in this whole crypto thing? Okay. So I mean so Whiff has done really well mm. for me personally. I've already, you know, made some sick gains this cycle, yeah. right? And we've just started the cycle. There will be more gains. And then mm. what happens is towards the end of the cycle, you're like, okay, I've got all this crypto wealth now. What can I do with it? Mm. And you can't go to Farm City or Chicken Republic I and use your Ethereum or your Solana <laughs> yeah. to send. It's not easy. And there's a whole process to turn it into fiat. Mm. So you will try to turn some into cash, but you will spend some on the blockchain. Mm. And then that's where these identity projects come in. Like in, the, in real life, like when you flex, like when you see an artist buy mm. a watch mm. with ice, maybe a Rolex or a, a Audemars PJ or a Patek, it's a flex. There's no difference between a Casio watch, an Apple watch, and a watch that costs $500,000. What's the one they're all wearing now? Richard Mill. Yeah. David has a Richard Mill. Mm. Our governor, Samolu, has Richard Mill. <laughs> Rema has a Richard Mill. And these Richard Mills are like $250, $500, $10 million or whatever, right? It's a flex. Apple mm. Watch tells the same time, but it's a status flex, right? Mm. PFPs on NFTs as identities, like CryptoPunks, is the same thing. All my ID online has my CryptoPunk. Okay. And it's almost like I'm signaling to people that, yeah, I was early in this space, mm that this is who I am, show me some respect. You can have a PFP of something that make that, that means nothing. Not everybody's into the watch game. Everyone picks their games. Some True. people is the car game. Some people is the banana hi- island house I want <laughs> game. Some people is the private jet game. Some people is the watches game. Some people it's the digital identity game. I, I'm not rich enough to figure out my own game. Bro, it's not, it's not, it's not about, be- it's about, see, this cycle, yeah. there yeah. will be projects, yeah. NFT projects, mm. that mint millionaires. Defo, right. right? And I they guess. haven't even started yet. They're still on zero or they haven't started. I'm telling you that. All right. Guys, I'm going to create a small, I don't know if it's Discord or WhatsApp group, very close group to Michael. But then it's to cost you money. It's cost you money to get in <laughs> business for us. Yeah, they find their own alpha <laughs> and everybody just add a Discord group, but it's a yeah. lot. It's stressed to run. Okay. But uh, I may open it up again. But I, sh- I share information. Okay. When people hit me up on my IGDM or people on who Twitter? know my WhatsApp. Yeah, I don't. End of the day, mm. these are all like bets. Everyone has to be ready to take the risk. Yeah, you know, so something I keep telling people: just you just have to be ready to take the risk. Take the risk. I know, just got an idea. Do you, do you know what coin? Yes, and I I have a thesis on that as well. Yeah, yeah. I just you know you said identity projects yes. could become big yes. and still open it. Once open I leave AI. here, once I leave here, I'm going to go and spend some money on the world coin token. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually, I won't lie. I was put off by the project when they had these like orbs. Yeah, they were going around the in world Kenya. and tell you, mm-hmm. let me scan your eyeball, <laughs> and I'm gonna give you some tokens. And I was like, nah, get out of here. Mm-hmm. I think that's dumbed down a little bit, okay. and I think it's an interesting project. And mm-hmm. because of the fact that we've seen what ChatGPT has done, mm-hmm. it's the same guy, Sam Altman. True, it's True. the same guy. So if we, I'm sure a lot of people use ChatGPT mm-hmm. today, right? So if we've seen where AI is going, what these LLM models are doing, mm. I think that Sam knows what he's doing with WorldCoin yeah. in terms of like identity. Yeah, will be awesome. Probably going to be my own project that will catapult me into that. Amen, bro. <laughs> Amen, bro. Check All the market. Right. Yeah. Buy some meme coins as well, man. Uh, yeah. I just, I'm, choose, I'm just choose, not choose, decided. You know, there's there's mm. a new slogan that we have in the space. Last cycle, the slogan was, we had a few slogans. Was, okay. We are going to make it, which is Wag Me. Wag Me, yeah. Right? And then have fun staying poor. <laughs> right because as everyone was getting rich we'd be like have fun staying poor I mean, we all got poor the last two years yeah. don't get it wrong but we, this cycle the way I see it the slogan that we like so far is called choose rich every time choose rich choose, I'm choose rich, rich every time I'm choosing rich like choose some, rich every time bro like something you see in church I swear I choose rich choose your rich name, yes now <laughs> choose you rich. don't choose poor now <laughs> don't choose, poor. choose rich every time yeah you know, awesome, so, awesome, yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's been a really fun conversation with yeah, you man, yeah man yeah man it's all love it's all yeah, good um, guys now you know more about what's really going on in the NFT market what's also going on in the crypto market it's these are exciting times I'm sure soon very soon things will evolve beyond us just making money from these markets I'm sure very soon they will have more reward use cases on how we live our lives sure. and things like that. So, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Let's 
looking 100%. for percent yeah. please people don't fade <laughs> crypto yeah it's a crazy space what i always tell people that yes people tell me there's so much scams 99 mm. percent of nfts last cycle i won't lie they were like grimy mm. a large chunk of them but you got to find that one percent find that one percent it could change your life. It can change your perspective, mm. and you can hold these things for the long term, like you hold property mm. and um, what have you. So don't fade the space. I'm not a crazy guy, <laughs> right? <laughs> Try yeah. listen to me. Yeah, awesome. I mean, listen to Michael. Michael has been in the space for just Google Crypto Punks, Google Body PR Club, and you know that he knows what he's talking about. All right. Yeah, very interesting conversation with me too, Michael. I hope by the next time we do this, I will have made my own millions. Yes, my own so Bitcoin. <laughs> for <All right>. sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Make sure you follow our social media pages to get more updates on what's going on in the world of tech in Africa. Make sure you follow our newsletters. The Tech Point Digest um, gives you a daily roundup of every, everything going on in tech in Africa. If you're into investments, you want to know how VCs invest, how angels also invest you want to subscribe to the equity merchant newsletter trust me it's it will be worth your while um that's anchored by tim grosserin and i think he has spoken to at least probably almost 100 investors so he knows what he's talking about um also in the workspace right you want to know what's going on with work what's how do you hire the best employees how do you make sure employees stay or as an employee you want to know how do you get the how do you get the best deals right from your employer you want to subscribe to the workplace africa newsletter that will be all from me and mike today make sure you share this with your friends family everyone and have a what's the new slogan for this okay can i swear oh, eh? can i swear uh, which, oh no, man, no? She's, okay because okay, there's two <laughs> okay. but look trust me yeah choose rich choose rich every time every time that'll be all from us bye <laughs> <laughs>